Look, given the fact that it's only the large incumbents at this point in time that are really dominating this space, given the kind of investments as well as the advance in technology required, uh, that it is only going to create bigger and bigger monopolies. Anyway, we're living in an era of big tech. This is going to make big tech even bigger. Let's address that concern first. I think this, uh, I mean, it's a possibility. Um, and, and technology tends to trend that way in general. But uh, I'd say in every generation of new technology that's come along, there's been this fear. Um, and uh, you know, when when the uh, when uh, the web came along, people thought that an Amazon would be absolutely dominant in every aspect of the web. We, there are hundreds of vendors on the web today, if not thousands, tens of thousands. When the mobile phone came along, people thought that one company would dominate. Uh, there are a couple of big companies in that space, but there are thousands of other companies. Most of the ecosystem in countries like India and the US are built on top of mobile operating systems out there. So there is this uh, fear, um, but I think there is also a way where government, um, private uh, systems, uh, private companies, and then the public sector in general and nonprofits, the society has come together to uh, chart the course forward. Um, sometimes it's through, um, you know, self-regulation of these industries. Sometimes it's through light regulation yeah. from governments. <clears throat> sometimes it's through some global sort of uh, understanding. Um, when it comes to AI, I think we're in the very early days. Uh, nobody's dominant right now. Open AI itself is a startup. Uh, and uh, and you've got you know some regulatory approaches from countries like China coming in as well. Um, I don't think it's a time for heavy regulation yeah. or even light. We're still discovering what's going on. Let's not um, mm. you know uh, stop the growth of this thing before it's even started. Okay, so how do you then respond to the call by Elon Musk and several others who have said that, let, look, let's pause on this for six months. Let's understand what we're dealing with. Let's see what is the regulatory framework, the regulatory architecture uh, that we need to put in place to ensure that there is no abuse and misuse. Do you think that that is a fair ask, Dave? No, I don't think so. I think that's uh, un unrealistic. Um, what's going to happen and say, what ban are you going to put on what? Um, this is a global uh, capitalist economy. Um, what ban, global ban, has ever worked on anything? Um, uh, I don't think that's possible. I think we just have to go forward uh, respectfully and uh, with intent to build uh, technologies that benefit companies and consumers and governments. Um, and we should have that conversation. It's actually a valid conversation. There's nothing wrong with it, but I don't think banning, you know, mm. helps. What happens in six months? You know, is the world going to be very different? No. Uh, what yeah. happens in a year? Bans don't work. Um, I think we just have to have the discussion and put in some of the safeguards. Um, an example yeah. would be consent-based uh, uh, stuff yes. like uh, uh, we're doing with Geo. Uh, sorry, we're doing right. with. Uh, with, uh, with what's happening in India, but there could be other mechanisms as well. But Anirudh, let's address the other fear, and this is something that you spoke of as well. Now, there's a Goldman Sachs report that says 300 million full-time jobs could be lost due to the kind of automation that we're likely to see on account of the use of chat GPT and other such applications. Now, how do you respond to that? Because you said it's not going to replace humans, it's going to be human plus. All right. Shreen, I think... Uh... You know, I think it's every evolution of, uh, you know, it's human evolution in very simple terms, right? As technology becomes more and more stronger, I feel if we are to compare five functions that a human was doing earlier, right? Uh, definitely technology has the means to do those, uh, say four out of those five functions even better, which basically means it's time how humans evolve and adapt to better skill set. And I feel what data science, machine learning, AI did, uh, especially as an education framework over the last 10 years, where we've seen uh, over hundreds and thousands of data scientists across the world, uh, data science has become uh, an education, uh, ed education framework for, on which people have upskilled. I think AI is going to become that framework, <clears throat> which basically means we'll see over millions of AI jobs created which involve dealing and working with AI on a day-to-day -day basis and people get smarter about its usage and acquire more skills that allow them to get better. Mm. Like, you can clearly see that 
uh, in our business creators so the answer is not creators uh, will get disrupted or automated it's creators who haven't been able to leverage and use ai well will probably be disrupted which basically means it's also yeah. an opportunity for people to get better and that's what we're seeing across different uh, forums different uh, professions be it uh, accounting be it a uh, law uh, law be it uh, content for that matter and i think this will usher in a new knowledge a knowledge economy where uh, ai is actually a co-pilot in every task Uh, or function there is the hypothesis that's being put forward is that we are going to see massive productivity gains but a lot of economists point out that through the course of the last two decades even with the advent of new technologies 2G 4G now we're talking about 5G and so on and so forth there hasn't been that kind of productivity gain that was expected or anticipated that we've seen so you know are we are we over hyping this productivity gain argument over here we are seeing it clearly in the usage that people are actually using it for work related uh, use cases and people are getting real direct benefits in their day to day lives let's say if you were a developer maybe 20 30 years back you would have to write code in c today developers are writing it in python like python is one of the most popular language 5 to 10 years down the line there's a good chance that we would be writing code in natural language just think about it there are so many tools currently out there who are uh, you know uh, automating sql and you know uh, letting people write sql queries in natural language it's a massive productivity gain just think about it currently there are 30 million developers what if uh, using natural language we can train 1 billion developers that is something which is possible out of this new technology and if you see maybe in the short horizon okay. we are not seeing productivity gains using 2g 4g and these other, uh, other stuff right but uh, but but if you if we see using computers what we have been able to achieve or using internet what we have been able to achieve uh, yeah. this kind of a shift which we are seeing through right now is an equivalent shift with respect to internet and with respect to computer it's not something which is you know uh, gimmicky or which is just a hype because when you see actual mm -hmm. usage when you see a developer using natural language to write code that is as real as it uh, as it gets what's happening in india uh, within this uh, ecosystem what does the port ai portfolio for lightspeed look like uh, and what are the unexplored niches dev uh, that uh, that uh, you know you potentially see headroom for significant growth yeah lightspeed's portfolio um, you know we've been investing in ai for the last 10 years it's not a new thing it's been on a gradual ramp and i think we're seeing a very public consumer oriented sort of reaction now with chat gpt but we've got uh, investments in three broad areas uh, and i think the ecosystem broadly breaks down into two broad areas one is the large language models or llms uh, these are companies like openai we already talked about those mm. the second is um uh the consumer facing or enterprise facing applications pepper and merlin are examples of those but there are lots of others in the market um we've got a company called circle labs that helps uh consumers uh interact with characters that are speaking in real time that uh, talk to them uh could be a doctor for example in the future a doctor's assistant could be a teacher etc um and we've got various other application or income is yellow.ai is another one in india which is doing customer support using ai including native ai so that's the second category and the third category which is a big area of focus for us uh uh is uh the in the middle which is the ha ha technologies to make the llms uh programmable secure private all of those problems that we've been talking about right now and there's a bunch of companies coming along that area vector databases um prompt engineering observability developer tools there's a bunch of other technical stuff happening there that is very very large and very big companies have been built on previous generations of uh you know the web and and mobile and those, those sorts of things so those are the three categories when it comes to india um i've seen less on the llm side itself i think that requires you know billions of dollars to go build those llms although um as as recently as last week we've seen a 7 billion parameter uh, llm running on a macbook uh open source so that trend on cost coming down while functionality goes going up is very very apparent kind of like Moore's law but applied to AI on steroids 
Um, and so we see less of that in India, but we expect to see more open source, et cetera, being adopted in India. We see much more happening on the application side, companies like uh, Merlin and Pepper and Yellow and others. But then we see a whole new category of tools coming in the middle. Um, we've even signed a couple of firm seats in the last two weeks in this middle layer uh, in India. So we see a lot more coming along there. Anirudh, I'll start by asking you, you know, what's the priority? What is the, the, you know, if you have visibility on the next 12 to 18 months, what does it look like for you? I think uh, every company in the world today is mandated now almost to either integrate AI in their systems or uh, have other application-based companies grow faster in product development and outbeat them which basically means that I think every business out there which is going digital sooner or later will have to adapt to AI. And that's what we are seeing across all our customers, even for Pepper. Uh, and uh, I think we always say every company is going to be a content company. Uh, I, I might probably add an AI content company or uh, that part uh, for, for, for all of us out there. <laughs> Okay, that's a challenge that you're putting uh, putting up for me. Uh, I I have to then steer this ship to becoming an AI content driven ship as well. <laughs> but uh, Pratyush, I'll give you the final say. Yeah, I think Shireen, uh, for, for us at Molden, the direction which we are taking is that everywhere any human reads or writes, we are going to be there to help them integrate AI over there, um, and and we are going to help them do their job in a much faster, much more creative manner. Uh, I think we are very fortunate enough that we live in a particular time wherein, uh, you know, small companies like us can actually move fast, can actually, you know, invest deeply. Thanks to also our, our investors, Better Capital, to, you know, uh, take a bet on, on this space and on us. Uh, I think what we are not, uh, the only limitation currently which we have as a company and as an entire Indian economy is our own imagination. What all interesting use cases or applications can you imagine which can you know drastically improve your productivity? For example, Pepper Content is doing it very well for content creators. Molden is doing uh, very well for browser and general browser productivity. Yeah. I think the, the, the final question for all of the watchers over here is, what is it that you can imagine which can be uh, enabled by AI? So that, that is uh, that is where like the nationally Molden and all other players well, are, I think, going. You know, we're, we're, we're going to have to continue this dialogue as, as we look at this reimagination that you speak of and the disruption that all three of you have talked about. Uh, it's not going to be done here in this one conversation. But uh, Dev, Anirudh and Pratyush, many, many thanks for joining us here to talk to us about what's happening here in India in the generative AI space. More importantly, what the opportunities and the landscape could potentially look like. We will have you back to chat about this some more. For now, we will say goodbye on this edition of Young Turks. Us here. Thanks very much for watching. Stay tuned. The news continues on CNBC TV 18.